The Artistic Water Supply System is a well-known asset of New York City. In fact, many locals would be proud of it, saying that it is the primary cause of the city's superb pizza and bagels. Well, the truth is, the simplicity of New York's water supply system is actually what makes it so well known. In contrast, the kind of simplicity it holds comes with being quite costly. Today, we will examine how simple yet expensive it is, as well as how New York City collects and cleanses its water. Are you ready? Let's get this started. Would you believe that New York City is a city with a water shortage despite being surrounded by so many waterways? This is mostly due to lack of a sizable supply of fresh water on which New York City was developed. For instance, the East River is a tidal estuary, which means the water is unfit for human consumption or use. Even though the Hudson River is a freshwater river, it only contains drinkable freshwater somewhere between the Tappan Zee Bridge and Poughkeepsie. And when the water reaches Manhattan shores, it becomes an ocean estuary. To put it briefly, the Hudson, Staten, and Long Rivers that encircle New York City are useless to the people. Other than the mentioned waterways, New York City also has Collect Pond, a significant freshwater source located in what is now Chinatown and extends 60 feet below the surface. The area was occupied by tanneries, breweries, and other water-hungry businesses when the English arrived many years ago. And of course, the population is also expanding during that time. However, this became a dilemma because the city caused the only water supply in the region to become unstable due to intensive consumption. In an effort to resolve the issue, they dug wells, but the underground water was not suitable for people to use. In addition, Manhattan's watershed is so small that it was hardly able to sustain the expanding population, especially the population of today. As a result, NYC needed some help from the mainland. Then, there comes the Asokan Reservoir, one of New York City's most vital and closely watched infrastructures receiving about 40% of rain annually. And NYC has a store remarkable amount of water in six reservoirs. The six reservoirs have the capacity to hold 2 trillion liters of water, and approximately 4,000 square kilometers of Catskill mountain terrain are drained into these six reservoirs. But what makes these reservoirs so amazing is not their size, but how ordinary they are. Instead of big facilities or high defensive walls, the area is surrounded by woodland and few farms. Yeah, it's really quite simple, and keeping its simplicity needs a lot of effort. It's also important to keep in mind that the Catskill system is the US's main source of unfiltered water. While this reputation may bring a sense of pride to NYC, the EPA and the Clean Water Act require constant monitoring, protection, and proof of the water's safety. In relation to this, the New York Legislature formed the New York City Department of Environmental Protection, authorizing the city to control land use in the watershed. Actually, authorities in New York have been closely watching the area since 1905. Today, the DEP deployed police officers on land, water, and air to make sure they both uphold quality requirements. Additionally, there are 1,000 scientists, engineers, and other staff in the watershed conducting tests in the reservoirs every day to ensure that the unfiltered water is safe enough for millions of people. They also speak with the farmers and communities around the area to reduce the use of dangerous pollutants that may harm the watershed. However, getting that clean water to the city is the true challenge. Two of the world's longest and largest aqueducts were built to accomplish this. The Catskill Aqueduct is the first on the list. This is composed of a complex network of tunnels, siphons, and dams that can transport almost half a billion gallons each day. However, after 20 years, the rapidly growing metropolis required even more water. As a result, they constructed one tunnel that was 137 kilometers long. This tunnel is over three times longer than the one that came before it and holds the record for being the longest in the world. It runs beneath the dam of Rondout Reservoir, extending to 1,000 feet below the surface of New York City. Before we continue, I just want to remind you that if you've made it this far into the video, you're clearly enjoying it. Give it a like, subscribe so you don't miss anything, and let us know what you think in the comments section. The Catskill Aqueduct functions as one enormous inverted siphon. Although there are many ideas on the physics underlying how siphons function, it is essential to remember that as long as the tube's output is lower than its input, water will rise, defying gravity. This means since the Delaware Aqueduct's origin, 
the Rondout Reservoir is located 545 feet higher than its final destination. The Hillview Reservoir is just fine for the system to work. However, 50 years ago, officials discovered a leak in the section of the tunnel running underneath Hudson. The water flooded nearby settlements and inexplicably poisoned their drinking water systems. They tried to solve the issue by paying the residents to move away from the affected area. But it turns out that the only way to remedy the issue is to build a diversion tunnel, which took more than a billion dollars in expenses and years of planning and also construction. In order to connect the new tunnel to the old one, the aqueduct will stop its operation for the first time in 65 years in 2023. They can only hope that smaller water sources like the Cordon Aqueduct will be able to supply all of the water needed. However, it wasn't until this incident that DEP employees realized they needed to add Kensico Reservoir to the system. To get rid of any leftover germs, chlorine is first put into Kensico Reservoir. However, because chlorine concentrations disappear as water travels further, chlorine is added to the water once again at the Richmond Chlorination Facility for water traveling all the way to Staten Island. The DEP supplements chlorine with fluoride to prevent cavities, orthophosphate to prevent lead leaks from pipes, and sodium hydroxide to maintain the proper pH levels in the water. The Catskill Delaware Ultraviolet Water Treatment Plant, the largest in the world, was eventually used by the DEP to further enhance the water supply using 56 UV pipelines. More than twice as much water as the city needs each day can be treated at this plant each day. However, not all of the water in New York passes through this facility. The same as not all of the water comes from the safeguarded Catskills water system. The Gordon Watershed continues to supply New York with 10% of the water. The thing is, water in Corton needs to be filtered. The system that transforms Corton water into drinkable water costs $3.2 billion to operate and can provide 290 million gallons of portable water daily. 9 million people are provided with clean water through three tunnels, which also fills the city's famous wooden water towers. Over the course of the 20th century, New York was able to develop into a true megacity thanks to the treatment facility that provided Corton Watershed drinkable water as well as the Catskill water system. Today, however, they are worn out, leaking, malfunctioning, and require maintenance. According to reports, it still costs $400 million per year to fix the city's shattered pipes. This task is made significantly more challenging by New York's not-so-good underground structure. Additionally, the DEP has placed 965 water testing stations across the city, where staff members can examine the quality of the water supply. However, it doesn't stop there. There exists a tunnel named Tunnel Number 3 that is still not yet finished, and this tunnel will cost about $6 billion. This tunnel is said to be finished in 2026 and has been dubbed one of the most difficult public works ever attempted. It would span around 100 kilometers long, sit 600 feet below the ground, and be 100 kilometers in length. The image of New York's water supply system is really its simplicity. We have all seen how it allows the environment to collect and purify the water, while also using its tunnels and science in getting it to the city. However, although it is simple, we can't deny the fact that it's pretty costly. Cities that do not have the capacity to put that kind of money lack the chance to establish intricate protection plans for their watersheds and construct expansive networks of record-breaking aqueducts, leaving them with no choice but to continue using the water that is, by now, more required for more complicated systems to be consumable. In addition to having the financial resources to invest in the water supply infrastructure, New York showed us that while getting clean water may seem easy, it actually needs a lot of work and effort. What can you say about New York City's water system? Let us know in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Please click the bell icon so you'll be notified when new videos are posted. And as always, thanks for watching. Ponder this.